Helmsley Castle, also anciently known as Hamlake, is a medieval castle situated in the market town of Helmsley, North Yorkshire. Although the estate of Helmsley was granted to Robert, Count de Montaigne, following the Norman conquest, there is no evidence that a castle was built in this area at the time. However, a castle was constructed in wood around 1120 and was built by Walter Espec. It is positioned on a rocky outcrop overlooking the River Rye, featuring double ditches surrounding a rectangular inner bailey. The castle bears little resemblance to the modern bailey castles built at earlier times or at the castle built in the town of Pickering. The castle at Helmsley was only 1.9 miles from Rebo Abbey and Walter Espect granted the land for the abbey. Eorred, who was the abbey's first novice master, was known to be involved in Eorspect's affairs, both military and personal, and Helmsley was often used as a place of safety during the periods of instability. Walter was childless, and on his death in 1154, the castle passed to his sister Adelina, who married Peter de Roos. In 1186, Robert de Roos, son of Everard de Roos, began work on converting the castle to stone. He built two main towers, the round corner towers, and the main gateway on the south side of the castle. He died in 1227, granting the castle to his elder son, William, who lived there from 1227 to 1258. The only change to the castle during this time was the construction of a chapel in the courtyard. William's son Robert inherited the castle and was Lord of Helmsley from 1258 to 1285. His marriage to Isabel de Maguire, heiress to Belvoir Castle, funded the new hall and kitchen as well as strengthening the castle. This may include the building of an impressive South Barbican, which was constructed between 1227 and 1285. He built a wall dividing the castle into north and south sides, with the southern half for private use of the Lord's family in their new hall and east tower, and the northern half containing the old hall to be used by the steward and other castle officials. The strengthening of the castle continued into Robert's son's William's life. William de Ross II died in 1316. The East Tower may have been heightened specifically for the visit of King Edward III, who stayed at the castle for around five days in 1334. Helmsley Castle remained in the possession of the de Ross family until 1478, when Edmund de Ross sold it to Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who later became the infamous Richard III. Richard did nothing to the castle, staying instead in Middleham Castle. After Richard III's death at the Battle of Bosworth, Helmsley Castle was restored to Edmund de Roos by Henry VII. Edmund died childless in 1508, and the castle passed to his cousin, Sir George Manners of Etal. On, the, on his death in 1513, his son Thomas inherited it. Thomas was created the Earl of Rutland in 1525. On his own death in 1543, Thomas was succeeded by his son Henry. But that was under the rule of his grandson Edward that the castle was altered next. He had an old hall converted into a Tudor mansion and converted the 13th century chapel into a kitchen linked to the old hall by a covered gallery. 
and knocked down the new hall. The South Barbican was converted into a more comfortable residence at this time. On Edward's death in 1587, his brother, John Manners, inherited the castle, followed by John's son, Roger, and then Roger's younger brother, Francis. On the death of Francis in 1632, the castle was passed to George Villiers, 1st Duke of Buckingham, through his marriage to Catherine, Francis's daughter. During the English Civil War, the castle was besieged by Sir Thomas Fairfax in 1644. Sir Jordan Crossland held it for the King for three months before surrendering. Parliament ordered the castle to be slighted. Much of its walls, gates and part of its east tower were destroyed. However, the mansion was spared. The castle had been by this time inherited by George Villiers, the second Duke of Buckingham, who married Mary, daughter of Thomas Fairfax, in 1657. The same Sir Thomas Fairfax who would besiege the castle. After the death in 1687 of de Villiers, the castle was sold to Charles Duncombe. In 1695, he was a banker and politician knighted in 1699 and became Lord Mayor of London in 1708. The 40,000 acre estate was purchased for a sum of £90,000. His sister's Mary's husband, Thomas Brown, inherited the castle on Charles's death in 1711. Thomas changed his name to Duncan. He hired William Wakefield, a protégé of John Vanvre, to build the country house at Duncan Park overlooking the castle and left the castle to decay. The castle was designed as a picturesque backdrop for Duncan Park estate and was even sketched by the great J. M. W. Turner. As a castle fell into disrepair, the local community took advantage of the site to hold fates, pageants, and even agricultural shows. The vicar of All Saints Church, Charles Norris Gray, often held events in the castle throughout the latter part of the 19th century. The castle passed into the hands of the Works of Office in 1923 under the guardianship of Sir Charles Piers, who began clearing the debris and trees from the site. The castle's remarkable earthworks were planned to be part of an anti-tank defence during World War II. Although it is still owned by Lord Faversham's family, of Duncan Park, the castle is now in the care of English heritage.